Okay, so find the volume of the solid and the revolution generated by revolving that region bounded by y equals x, y equals 0, and basically that's saying x equals 2 and x equals 4. So there's a lot of lines that we're revolving, and eventually we're going around the line x equals 4. All right, so I'm going to try to draw it by hand first, and then I'll use my computer because it's better than my hand drawings. But let's look at, at this way first. So this is my graph. Obviously, I'm looking in the first quadrant. Y equals X, that's this line right here. Y equals 0, that's this line right here. X equals 2, that's this line right here. And X equals 4, that's that line right there. So I'm looking for the region that's bounding all of them. That is this shape. So this right here is the closed region. I'm taking that thing and I'm revolving it over the line x equals 4. So I'm revolving that over this line. So I'm spinning it over the top that way. Okay, so let's do a better picture now that we see that. I'm taking this shape right here. So again, this is my shaded region right here. I'm taking that shape. I'm taking that shape and I'm revolving it over the line. So it's going to look something like this. No, two. There we go. It's going to look like that. Okay? I'm revolving over this center line here. So the middle line is going down the middle. You can still kind of see it there. But I'll draw it in again because you can see it better. This is the middle of my graph. And so there's no space in the middle. I only really revolved one set of things there. Um, and so you can hopefully see that this is a disk problem again instead of a washer. Um, my shape is going to go from here to there. There's going to be where one of my disks go. And uh, the next one would be going like from here to here. But then what happens here is it starts changing. So what's different about those first two shapes compared to from there up? What's they have different left and rights. So from 0 until right here, from 0 until here, they're all the same sized cylinders. They're all going four across looking cylinders. They're all pretty much the same. But then right here at this spot, now my left line becomes this red line instead. So up until that point, it was this line. And then we switched and made it that line. And so if you remember back when we did area, that means we need to switch our bounds or, or, and switch and make a new integral at that point. So let's look at this now. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste this picture in so we can use it. Right. Buy bad picture. All right, here we go. So given that, what that means is I need to set up two different bounds. One of the bounds is going to be this section. So this is that first bound. I'm going to figure out the area of that shape. It's basically just a cylinder. It's nothing fancy. That cylinder, I'm stacking them from the bottom up. And so I would stack them from 0 to 2. It would be a cylinder, so it's still pi r squared. 0 and 2 are those x values or y values here. They're y values as I'm stacking up. So this is a dy problem. I want the radius of these circles. So the radius of this circle would go from here, from the center to the outside edge, from the center to the outside edge, or from 4, 4 to 2. So 4 minus 2. This is the line of 4. This is the line of 2. 4 minus 2, or just 2 squared. Okay. It's a pretty much straight up cylinder. Okay. If you knew what the area of a cylinder was, you could, or volume of a cylinder, you could just use that. But we got it there. Okay, once we've done that, we need to then add to that the other part. So that's the worst integral sign ever, but there's an actual integral sign. Now we're going from when to when. 2 to 4, we're stacking the second chunk. It's still pi r squared. It's still dy because I'm still stacking upwards. It's a dy problem. What's the right line now? 4 till y, because this is the line y equals x. And so I want to go to that line. So 4 to there, 4 to there, 4 to there. So it's 4 minus y. 
it's y equals x, but obviously I'm using y because it is a dy problem. It technically wouldn't change anything in your calculator on this one, uh, but you want to make sure you put it in terms of y. So all I got to do is type in that big chunk. You can type it in all at once if you really wanted to, and I will because I do. So we're going to go pi. So second pi, math 9. We're integrating from 0 to 2. 4 minus y squared. I'm sorry, I'm going to do the top one first, so 2 squared. So I put way too many parentheses to get 2 squared, which is just 4, but it's in there. dx plus, now I want my second one, so it's pi, math 9. I'm going from 2 to 4. And now we're doing parentheses, 4 minus y, close your parentheses, squared, dx. 33.510, which we said was what we were going to get. A little bit different there. That's probably a little bit more challenging, but at the same time, it's a good practice. Does that make sense?